Is type 2 diabetes a reversible disease? We're told that this is a chronic and progressive disorder. That means that once you develop type 2 diabetes, you're going to have it for life. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to be on medications, you're going to be on insulin, and then you're going to develop the complications. Blindness, nerve damage, amputations, heart attacks, strokes, kidney damage, dialysis. The whole works. It's inevitable. But is it really? Imagine a world where type 2 diabetes is a simple, reversible disorder, where a simple dietary maneuver can reverse your diabetes in a matter of weeks. The American Diabetes Association, of course, disagrees. They say, right on their website, that it's a fact that for most people, type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease. So you might as well forget about it. Don't even try to get better. It's hopeless. They're telling you there's no hope. But we can look at certain examples and we can see that this is actually not true at all. Let me give you some of these examples. Bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is also called weight loss surgery or stomach stapling. What they do is they take your stomach and they cut it to the size of a walnut. So you really just can't eat. Because you're not eating, you're going to lose a lot of weight. But what happens to the diabetes? Well, let's look at this study here. In this study, they randomized two groups of people. One group of people stayed on their medications and got the best medical therapy available. The other group got weight loss surgery. On the horizontal axis is time, over 12 months. On the vertical axis is the number of medications that these people were taking. You can see that the number of medications that people took while doing the best medical therapy available really didn't change. They kept taking the same number of medications. They're really no better than they were when they started, than they were at the end. But look at the weight loss surgery group. Very quickly, within a matter of months, they're coming off all their medications, and it keeps going. By 12 months, many of these people are off of all their medications, and their blood sugars are completely normal. That's amazing. Wasn't this a chronic and progressive disorder? Wasn't this a disorder where there's no treatment and there's nothing you can do, it'll get worse? Well, not really, not according to this study. It looks like diabetes is a disease that's reversible, but better than that, it's quickly reversible. And even other types of weight loss surgeries, such as gastric banding, have the same benefits. Gastric banding is a procedure where they put a belt inside your stomach and tighten it so that you can't eat. And again, what you see here is that the diabetes very quickly reverses and it stays gone. So this is not a chronic and progressive disorder. This is a reversible disorder. I'm not saying that ba gastric banding or, or weight loss surgery is the answer for everybody, but it simply points to the fact that the situation is different and this is a reversible disease. Let's look at another example. We can look at fasting. Fasting is a dietary maneuver where you don't eat anything for a certain period of time. I had this patient here, Richard, who came to me for treatment of his diabetes. He had been diabetic for 10 years, he was taking about 70 units of insulin, and he was developing complications. He was getting eye disease, he was getting kidney disease. So we changed his diet, we put him on a low carbohydrate diet, and we gave him some simple tips and we included some intermittent fasting in his regimen. Over a period of months, he lost about 50 pounds. And his diabetes got incredibly better. We took him off all of his insulin, took him off all of his medications, and his blood sugars are normal. Even two years out now, he's still on no medications and his blood sugars are doing amazing. So in fact, this is a reversible disease. Fasting seems to lead to a reversal of his diabetes. And this is not a new finding. In fact, if we go back almost 100 years, Dr. Elliot Jocelyn, perhaps the most famous diabetes specialist in history, wrote this in the Canadian Medical Journal. 
that temporary periods of undernutrition are helpful in the treatment of diabetes will probably be acknowledged by all after these two years of experience with fasting. So what happened was that he had been using fasting for two years and he thought it was so amazingly great that it's going to be obvious. Everybody's going to know this. There were a few problems, of course. At the time, he didn't differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. While it's very beneficial for type 2 diabetes, it really doesn't impact type 1 very much. And with the discovery of insulin a few years later, all focus shifted to insulin, and everybody forgot about these dietary therapies. Recently, in the United Kingdom, Dr. Taylor performed a study called the CounterPoint Study. And there he put people on very low-calorie diets. While it's not fasting, it's very close. And look at these results. In this group, the blood sugars went from 9.6 to 5.9 in seven days. Seven days! His sugars have gone back to normal. What happened to this idea that it's chronic, it's progressive, you'll always be on medication? It's simply not true. There's another example we can give. We can look at the example of very low carbohydrate diets, or so-called ketogenic diets. Let me give you a case. I had a 27-year-old graduate student. She was actually studying physiology. And she was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Her hemoglobin A1c was 10.4%. This is a three-month average of her blood sugars. The diagnosis of diabetes happens at 6.5%, so 10.4% is very high. Her doctors were very concerned, of course, started her on three medications right away. Being only 27, she, she didn't want to stay on medications for the rest of her life. So she looked on the internet and decided that she would follow a ketogenic diet. Well, she very quickly lost about 20 pounds. And at her three-month checkup, her hemoglobin A1c was 5.5%, well within the normal range, and clearly not diabetic. Better, she had taken herself off of all her medications as soon as she started. So in this case, it looked like her type 2 diabetes was essentially cured. Wow. That's not what we are told, right? But we all know this is true. We all know that the type 2 diabetes is completely reversible. For example, if somebody comes up to you and says, you know what, I lost 50 pounds and my diabetes went away. You'd say, wow, that's great, terrific, good for you. You wouldn't say to them, no, you're lying to me. The American Diabetes Association says it's chronic and progressive. Get back on your medications. No, of course not. So it's immediately obvious that this is just a lie. Type 2 diabetes is not chronic and it's not progressive. It's reversible. But what about all the cases about people on medications? Do you ever hear people say, hmm, I started my insulin or I started my medications and now I'm so much better I took myself off? No, not really. If you take medications, you're generally on it for life, right? Or what about the standard low-fat diet? Nobody ever comes up to me and says, you know, I went to my dietician, I started a low-fat diet and now I'm so much better, I'm off all my medications. I've seen thousands of patients, and that doesn't happen. So in those cases, the diabetes is not cured. So actually, there are treatments that lead to a cure, and there are treatments that do not lead to a cure. So those that lead to a cure, bariatric surgery, fasting, and very low-carb diets, and these treatments do not lead to a cure. Insulin, other drugs, a low-fat diet. Mm. You'll never guess, of course, which direction all our current treatment protocols and research are heading to. They're all heading towards the path of no cure. And that's why they tell you it's a chronic and progressive disease. But it's not. This is amazing news. This is amazing. Because type 2 diabetes, in fact, a curable and reversible disease, 
The fact that treatments exist means that there is hope for all of us. Drugs, however, cannot cure a dietary disease. The cure must be a diet, the right diet.